Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potential Unleashed. We're back with another video. We have Classroom of the Elite Volume 9. It is out. It released September 28th. And I finally was able to read it and finish it and process it. And so I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. But I thought it was a really good book. It was another setup book. But I liked it a lot more because it had more of our favorite characters. Like Karuzawa, um, Harikta, Ichinose, Sakura, the Enya Koji group. And a lot of other characters that we love and enjoy. But the book, it starts out with Ichinose, it's her soliloquy, basically, it talks about how she was in junior high, she was very successful, had a lot of friends, very popular, was a part of the student council, however, she had one incident that threw that all the way, where her family, they were upset, and it threw them in dismay, and that she locked herself in her room for most of her final year of junior high, and because of that, she found out about this school, and she joined that, so she get get a fresh new start and in also in her soliloquy she talks to Nagamo about joining the student council and the reason that is because simply she was in the student council when she was in junior high so she wanted to do it in high school and Nagamo he allows her to join the student council but with the catch is that he had to know about her past and what she did wrong and she ended up telling him and the reason why Nagamo wants her on the student council is mainly because he bases those who are on the student council off of look mainly the women and so he also does it based off of grace influence in other aspects and his goal was for Ichinose to join so that he can mold her into well what he would want his ideal I guess successor to be and so I'm going to do these a little bit different. I'm going to go chapter by chapter. So in chapter one, it starts out with Nagumo. He's having a meeting with uh, Sakayanaki. They are talking about how Sakayanaki can get Ichinose expelled. Basically, Sakayanaki, she goes in and she's like, all right, Nagumo, your room, it looks a bit different than a normal student council room. Instead of looking like a school and a student council's meeting room, it looks more like your own personal hangout room. And Sagi Naki, she says, hey, I've already made the claim that I'm going to crush Ichinose. However, she basically wants to know what is and what isn't within the school rules in order to do so. Basically, Sagi and Naki, she's going in. She's like, hey, I'll probably get Ichinose expelled with Nagamo. He's like, all right, you can do anything you want, but don't get her expelled. Like I said earlier, Nagamo, he wants Ichinose and he likes her. She thinks that she is a beautiful woman and that if he can mold her into the person she wants whenever he graduates he will be able to have her run the school like how he wants to basically follow in her footsteps and he wants that to happen kind of like a train effect or an effect that happens as he's gone the next person up does what he does etc and so Sangi and Naki and um what's his name Nagma they have a conversation about that and Nagma also mentions that he's going to be more lenient about the different rules for example um, when it comes to violence he says he's not going to be as harsh as what Manabu said he'll say he'll let some people and some fights happen and also he may mention about the way that Koenji wanted to get points um, by buying them off of the third year so he's also going to make that illegal but Saginaki and Nagumo they finish their conversation and as Saginaki leaves Nagumo asked her about Anya Koji we know that she knows about him in his past however she plays dumb and so she leaves where Kushida she goes and she has a conversation with Nagumo that we don't know what they talk about chapter two it starts out with the shift of relationships we know at the end of book eight Karazawa asked Anya Koji what would happen if she broke up with Hiroshi she think that well does he think that she should and then your coach is like well do what you want basically he said yeah break up with him it doesn't benefit you anymore now that you're a new person so she dumps him and so a lot of people notice that Hirata doesn't necessarily look depressed or sad about it so they question that they're like well if he just got dumped why aren't you more in the dumps we know that their relationship was fake and the reason why um Karazal was the one to dump Hirata was because of her status it would be bad if Howard Rata, who didn't benefit at all from their relationship, and he would and he wouldn't lose anything. So if he were to dump her, it would knock her status down. Whereas if she dumped him, everything would pretty much be the same. Harika then asked Anya Koji, has she heard or has he heard about the rumors about Ichinose? And he hasn't. But basically the rumors, it's a lot of them. Um, basically they call her a drug addict, that she has a sugar daddy or she accepts payment from older men, that she's a thief and that she's violent. And so 
Harita, she's like, okay, well, this is odd, um, but maybe there's truth to some of this. She doesn't know, but she thinks Ichinose is a nice person. However, everybody who's everybody has their own secrets, and especially if you're like really, really nice, well, that's even more question because a lot of people question fake niceness. Is it really real or is it fake? But put that out the way. Um, Saginaki, she also comes to class C. I was about to call them class D, but they're class C now. And so she wants to talk to Yamachi, which I don't know why. He believes it's because love at first sight I, that he knocked her down during the special training camp. And so maybe she's in love with him with that. They don't know. But the Indian Koji group, they go later after class and they talk about Ichinose and what's going on with her and about the relationships in class C. Where each notice is in the cafe, however, in your coach notices that Ken Zaki isn't with them, and that is each notice's right hand man. Then they get a call from Miyaki, he's another person part of the Indian Koji group, where there's a fight about to go down between Ken Zaki and Hashimoto. And if you guys don't know Hashimoto, he is from Class A. He was a part of Enya Koji's group in the special test, or a part of the training camp in the last book. And Hashimoto, he has some influence um, in the story, especially what we find out that he has a relationship with Ruin and a lot of other key figures. So I wanted to bring that up, but basically... Um, Hashimoto, he claims that, hey, he's been spreading the rumors, however, he doesn't know where they originated from, he's just the one, basically he's playing telephone, just coming across to, to tell everybody because he thinks it's interesting, right, and so that's the whole situation that happens with them, then the fight never really takes off because Miyake was there, and we found out that Miyake back in his junior high days, he was more of a delinquent, and that he was, he is able to fight and that he was next to or his school was next to where Ruin went. Chapter 3 as the group is leaving for the fight and Koji's going back to his dorm and he notices Ichinose and he wants to go and talk to her however he notices or he feels somebody's presence behind him he thinks it's Hashimoto because well Hashimoto had been following him around recently which I'll talk about a little bit later in the book but he notices that it's Mei-chan, or Mei-yu, or Mi-chan. I think that's what her nickname is, because they say her name is hard to pronounce. But she wants to talk to Anya Koji. Basically, she goes to Anya Koji saying, hey, is Hirata single? And he's like, well, why are you asking me this question? We don't talk. And basically, Hirata was like, because he's one of the most reliable people in the class, or something along those lines. And this man, and, oh, I didn't mean to hit my desk. This man, Anya Koji, has been set up, because Harikta talked about how Anya Koji is holding back on some of his abilities to um Kese, right? And so now Hirata is saying that he's reliable. And this man your coach just wanted to chill and have a normal high school life and all these people are talking highly of him and starting to make him fly more on the radar. But basically in your Koji, he's like, Well Hirata is probably going to really want a nice girl and Mei Chan, she looks like a really nice girl. So he's like, Hey, if you lay low and wait a little bit, you probably have a chance. And if I'm being honest, I really do think in the future that she'll probably be his girl girlfriend because Hirata seems to like those type of women but then we also get Hiori she comes in and interrupts their conversation where then Enya Koji he in order to make it seem like they were talking about something that wasn't about relationships he says hey he was asking her about China because May she is the only person in the class I believe who is from China but the real reason why he already came and interrupted them as Enya Koji went to leave is because she wants Enya Koji's help in order to help Ichinose. She likes Ichinose and she doesn't want somebody of a good person to have a tarnished reputation. Where Enya Koji's like, alright, talk to Hirata, talk to Rikta, leave me alone, I don't want to help you. Which is valid, I guess. He didn't say it like that, I just did it because it was funnier that way. But he already, she's like, oh. I understand and leaves. Then Enya Koji gets a text from Harita that she's meeting with Ichinose, and basically because they have their alliance, um, Ichinose she's like, "Hey, it's fine. Don't worry about me. Everything will be okay." And Ichinose she leaves, and Enya Koji he wants to know um, why Harita is doing this, and she's like, "Well, because we have an alliance." And basically he's saying Harita's growing because the old Harita wouldn't really care, but now she's letting her emotions get in the way. And Enya Koji he wonders, "Well, is she doing this off of emotion? Will it help?" Her? them in the future or will it hurt them in the future and as he leaves he also sees Ichinose at the elevator she calls him over and wants to walk with him just to comfort her because she is going through a lot and she wants to reassure to him that everything will be okay and also I want to make mention 
that late at night she got a call or any Koji he got a call from somebody of an unknown caller ID basically they called said Enya Koji um, when he responded they didn't answer it was dead silent and Enya Koji hung up the phone where he believes that man is making a move I personally think that man is his father but yeah so Enya Koji he's got a lot he's dealing with in this book chapter 4 we have new rumors about Ichinose spinning around if you guys remember I believe it was a book four and a half it may be a little bit after that, basically, in the letters. Uh, it might have been book six. I think it was book six, actually. But somebody put letters in people's mailboxes saying that um, Ichinose was illegally getting points and that it was from Ruin when it was actually from Enya Koji. But this time, Enya Koji didn't do anything. And it goes and says Ichinose is a criminal. And a lot of people are angry and like, Ichinose, you should say something. She said, no, no, I'm not going to. And Enya Koji believes that she's really hiding something and that there are some truth to the rumors because she's not fighting back. If you guys didn't know, the best way to make a lie is to implement some of the truth in it because, well, if it's true, well, some of the truth, people are going to believe it. I got that from Attack on Titan, specifically Pixies, said in season four. But anyway, Koji, he don't really give a fluff. He's going back to his room where this woman, her name is Kamura, she falls and back if you guys look don't know who that is I remember in book seven and a half that or it might have been book seven i believe it's seven and a half though um he was being followed by somebody and that was kamuro she was ordered by shaginaki to follow him and so she follows him back to his room and they talk and basically she's saying that she's tired of um being uh shaginaki's puppet and that she wants him to take her down and being she doesn't want to be her lackey so basically um Kamara, she is a shoplifter, and the reason why um, she's worked for Shaginaki is because Shaginaki, she caught her in the act, and she was like, well, I'm not going to report you, but you're going to work under me. And remember in book eight, when Shaginaki, or I, I don't remember, somebody said that uh, Kamara Ichinose's crime is the same, so basically Ichinose, her biggest secret, that she shoplifted. And then Enya Koji is hilarious. He's like, all right, this is when she was explaining her backstory, Kamaro and Koji. He's like, all right, this is cool and all, but like, how do I not know you're lying? And she's like, okay. And so she went and she stole beer where she came back and she gave it to Enya Koji. He checked, he checked it. He's like, all right, this is valid. And so Kamaro, she believes that Enya Koji because she knows that there's something special about him since Sagiyanaki asked her to tell him. She wants him to take her down and save Ichinose. And your coach, after their little meeting, he goes to the convenience store. However, he gets a call from her to Manabu, where Manabu is basically warning him, saying that, hey, Nagama made contact with Kushida. And then your coach, he's like, all right, I don't give a fluff what she does. What does that do with me? And basically, he's like, all right, well, that means that she's going to try to get Susune um, Harikte, her little, uh, his little sister, expelled, and that potentially it could be Enya Koji, who she tries to get expelled as well. All right, we have chapter five. This is a very important chapter. It's Valentine's Day because Enya Koji, he had turned his phone off the night before. He looks at it. He gets messages from Sakura and Kei that he didn't answer. And then as he's going to class, he noticed Harata. Well, Enya Koji, he was arriving to class slightly, well, closer, cutting it close to being late. Um, he wasn't late, but he noticed Harata in the elevator. He's like, Harata, you're usually class early. Why are you late? And basically, when the elevator opens, there's a lot of girls trying to give him chocolates. So Enya Koji deduces, basically, Harata's been going back and forth to his dorm in class, delivering the chocolates that the girls have been giving him. And then we go to class, and these the guys are like, hey, who got chocolates, who didn't? They're panicking a little bit. And then Enya Koji, he also notices that and overhears that Ichino says she was absent from class, and he wants to go to talk to her, but... When he goes to her dorm, it's very packed. So he goes back to his dorm. And then about 5 o'clock, he goes to meet Karazawa. And so she gives him chocolates. And they also discuss that she wants him to tutor her. And also that um, he asks her about the mysterious call. And to see if Karazawa, because we know how popular she is and her influence, to see if she knows who it is. Chapter 6, Hashimoto. He's been following Enya Koji for a little bit. He's a person who would do anything to remain on top, which is why he has connection with a lot of people in different classes. We saw in book 8, his connection with Ruin, etc. And so Hashimoto, he's been following Enya Koji since 
Um, Nagumo made mention to him and brought up the attention about how Manabu has shown interest in Anya Koji and he also saw him during the track race so he wants to know well is Anya Koji the real deal or is he boring? As he follows him Hashimoto claims that Anya Koji isn't really anybody special and that he's easy to track compared to like Shagi Yanaki and Ichinose and other people and then Hashimoto notices that Anya Koji is leaving in his dorm later than usual Anya Koji usually sticks to a specific schedule and this is where he follows him and notices that he's meeting with Karuzawa where Hashimoto basically deduces that oh you have a crush or y'all are going now or y'all are a secret relationship thingamabob and so then Karuzawa and Anya Koji they're quick on their feet they talk Kashimoto out of believing that basically saying that Anya Koji is the middleman for somebody who Karazawa is going to give the chakras to etc where Hashimoto he tries to put the moves on Karazawa he's like hey go out with me and she's like Ninja, what the fluff you don't get on somewhere we know that she likes Anya Koji and then she ends up leaving and Hashimoto he then gets Anya Koji contact information and this is where Hashimoto he stops following Anya Koji because well, he deduces that there's nothing special going on aside from the fact that he meets up with Karazawa or he has some connection to Karazawa. And then he goes back to his dorm and in your Koji, he gets chocolate from, I believe, six people. He gets it from Sakura Hasabe. Um, he also gets it from Karazawa Hiori that he met at the library and two other people. Oh, why did I do that? Like, I don't know why I did that. Like, that's only five figures. And then he gets it from two other people. But I'll talk about those people as we get on later in the book. Later that night, Anya Koji goes to see Ichinose because she hasn't been at school in a minute. And he thinks she's just hiding. However, she's actually genuinely sick. So he leaves her alone. The next day in class, there are rumors going around not just about people in class B and Ichinose, but about every other class except for class A. In class C specifically, it brings up that Anya Koji has a crush on um, Karazawa that Sato she doesn't like uh, on Onedira I think that's another girl in the class and then that um, Shinohara she's a prostitute and that Hondo is into a beast girls and this is where everybody goes on a stir everybody's yelling everybody's upset where um, Yuki Mura I believe no not Yuki Mura uh, Yuki Mura I believe Yamachi he then makes fun of Shinohara about being a prostitute and starts pressing her about it where Ike gets upset. Crazy no basically her and Ike are going now. Where I personally believe that this has something to do with what Shage and Naki called Yamashia in the hallway for uh in chapter two. And so the rumors they are posted on an app that has a bulletin board where, like I said, it was every class but class A. And then later that day, class D, including Izaki, Hiori, Albert, and Ibuki, class A, Hashimoto, and I believe the person's name, it was some, some new ninja. Um, I don't know his name. He's not really important, but he was there to help fight. And then the Ninja Koji group, they were there. And so they were talking peacefully. But, you know, Class D, they only saw stuff with hands. They went, they started fighting, and then they were scrapping. And it ended up not going anywhere because Class A, they keep claiming that they didn't post those rumors. And it's about he said, she said, and they're going back and forth. And when Ibuki, when she goes in the fight, something drops on the ground. It's her ID where Enya Koji knows something special about it. And he talks about it with Manabu later that night. But he says something, but, like, he doesn't go into detail, which probably will have an effect on the story a little bit later. We also do get confirmation that the first years has one more special test for this year and that the third years have two. The next day that Ichinose she comes back to class where Seginaki is making the move to crush her. And in the end, this is basically what Ichinose's story was about why she shoplifted. That's her crime. Like I said earlier, basically she stole a hair clip for her sister on her birthday that she really wanted because her family was broke, but she got caught because her mom returned it and her mom was mad at her and so she was upset with herself and she felt guilty and well that's pretty much it is it bad shoplifting is bad but like what Ichinose was killing herself over and getting so mad I didn't think it was that big of a deal but it is what it is and so Shage Naki she's like well a crime is a crime how do you know that she won't betray your own class and Ichinose she's like hey class are you guys going to support me or you guys disagree and everybody's like of course we'll support you so Shage Naki 
her goal to crush Ishinose, it didn't do anything. She was strong. And she ended up utterly suffering a defeat where the teachers, they come in and they're like, all right, no more rumors, especially with Nagumo. They're like, if you do that, you're getting suspended or more action will be taken care of. And then later, Anya Koji gets a call for Saki Yanaki where she's like, all right, you interfered with my plan, didn't you? And Anya Koji, he's like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, I know it's you. So they make a deal basically if in the special test next time, if whoever wins, if Saga Inaki wins, then she gets to expose Enya Koji his past. And if Enya Koji wins, he gets to basically, well, she's going to drop out. Chapter 7, it confirms that Enya Koji was the one to spread the rumors. This is no surprise. Usually how the books work is whenever there's like a major event that happens halfway through the book, and Yakoji got some influence on it. Schema Yakoji, back at it again, we love him. And so he had Kushida, she was the one to give the secrets and telling him what people in class see what was going on with them and other classes as well so he could write this stuff now it wasn't like life-threatening stuff it was some of it was lies but some of it had some truth to it like shinohara probably wasn't a prostitute etc and we know that kushida she is great when it comes to intel and about secrets because that is what happened in junior high and she was writing them on the blog and that's how people knew well, it was her in that that's how the class basically fell apart. And Kushida, in order for her to cooperate with him, and Yakoji, he offers half of his points that he gets each month for her because obviously he can't drop out and Harita, she can't drop out. So that's the only compromise that they can have. Also, I mentioned that there are two other people who give him chocolates. That's when she gave him the chocolate. She gave it to him the day before Valentine's Day. Gave it to him early so that she didn't have to give it to him later in class because she knows a lot of people. And the vice president of the student council, Kiriyama, was the one to post the different um, rumors. And Yokoji, he basically guilted him saying, hey, if you don't do it, I'll report back to Manabu saying that you went to Nagumo's side. And then Yokoji says, like, think of it as a favor. Think of you doing this, if you that I owe you a big favor, and that I'll always and have something to aid you when it's your turn next time. And the reason why Ichinose didn't crumble when Shagi and Naki um, claim that she was a criminal and she was doing all that in front of her whole class is because she already experienced it. Basically, Anya Koji would go to her room at lunch and he wouldn't go in there asking her questions or anything. He would just sit down and be like, hey, you want to talk about it? You can. I'll listen. But he wasn't going to put his influence and he wasn't going to give his thoughts about it like everybody else would. He claimed that he was just a door for her to just say everything to get it off her chest and so he would go every day and she wouldn't re respond or tell him anything except for the d the last day the 23rd right before the special exam or two days before the special exam i don't remember but it was right before the special exam like i said basically the reason why she opened up to him is because he didn't ask and he wasn't prying for information and he wasn't he didn't really care he didn't at all but all she did was just talk and get everything off her chest and she basically figured out everything for herself but because she just had somebody to listen and not give his input that that was why she was able to move on then we have chapter eight the final chapter where Enya Koji he goes and he's walking with Ichinose she is very thankful to what he did and he was like you know you're pretty cool. They have a cool moment where we know Anya Koji is very heartless and don't really give a fluff. He doesn't show any empathy and emotion like that. Um, but he says, hey, you were that was enough to charm a man like him. And she wants to move forward with Anya Koji trusting him. And he's like, hey, um, can I lean on you in times of trouble? And she, he's like, sure. If you like a man like me, Anya Koji's heartless. He's ruthless. He's cutthroat. So she don't know that, but we know that. <laughs> She also sees Nagma. She goes over to him. She doesn't have any hate in her heart for him, but she knows that he allowed Saga Inaki to put these rumors and talk about her in a negative light, where Nagma, he planned to break Ishinose and then build her back up in his own image. However, Anya Koji did that. He didn't break her down, but he built her up. So basically, she relied on him and now wants to rely on him for a long time instead of clinging to Nagamo, where Nagamo notices Anya Koji's walking with her, that he speculates that Anya Koji has something to do with Ishinose bouncing back. Ishinose also, she gives Anya Koji chocolates, and she said this is the first time she's ever done something like this, and that she's given chocolates to someone special, and so she's never given chocolate before, not even to anybody in class C, it is, oh, well, class B, it is also it's Valentine's Day, and so he was the one who 
the final person was Ichinose that got chocolate. So it was Sakura, Hisabe, Hiori, Kushida, Karazawa, and Ichinose who got, uh, who Anya Koji got chocolates from. After all of this, she then gives him the chocolates and then she leaves and she questions. She wants to know what this indescribable or inexplicable feeling that's in her chest. And the reason why I'm saying this, this was on like the wiki. I read the summaries of the wiki after I read the book. But that wasn't necessarily in the book, but I include this right here because there was a picture of Ichinose grabbing the left side of her chest. And also you could see that she was flustered and she had like the little blush marks on her face. And then like I said earlier that Nagumo knows Anya Koji has something to do with it. Where I personally think in the next book he's going to challenge him directly. Overall this was a solid book. I gave it about a 7.5 out of 10. It was another setup book, but it was better than the last one because we had our favorite characters involved. I'm really pleased with it. I'm very happy and I can't wait for the next book. I feel like book 10 is going to be live. But there's a slight issue. Book 10 was delayed. It was supposed to come out in November. However, it was pushed to February 2022 and which is funny because I don't know how that book gets delayed but book 11 doesn't get delayed. Book 11 is still supposed to come out in December. So I don't know if I'm going to read the PDF version of book 10 and then read book 11 when it actually comes out because I really do enjoy just sitting down having my hard copy of my book and reading it and I just enjoy doing my reviews of it but if I read the PDF version of book 10 I feel like I might as well read it for the rest of them that are out so I don't know I'm probably just going to wait till the book comes out to do my review and hopefully you guys will understand but the next book I probably think is going to be Nagumo challenging Anya Koji directly and then it's going to be the special exam that's uh, the final special exam of their first year maybe I don't know but I know that Saginaki is going to be involved because she challenged him directly in this book. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video from it. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat is on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.